All right, let's get into this uh, home link or study link 3.5 called Missing Numbers for Fourth Grade Everyday Math. And really here we are just using um, our basic multiplication and division facts and we can look at this little table down here to help us if we need it. Um, so let's just have a look quickly at a few of these, but I think you should be able to get this. Um, so the first one here is 30 divided by 6. If you're looking on your chart, <clears throat> what you do is you find 30 here. And if you look up where 6 goes to 30 and move to the side, that would be 5 for your answer. Same thing here. 21 divided by what equals 3? You can use your chart. <clears throat> and let's see. Three, oh, we'll start here, 3 to 21 would be 7, but I think most of you know these already. Um, here, 9 divided by, <coughs> or 9 equals what divided by 8? So you can look at 9, and 8, where does 9 line up with 8? Down here. So that would be 72. <clears throat> so that's just showing you how this uh, chart works. Um, down here, you could have different answers for these. Um, it could be just whatever you want to put in here, because there's more than one answer, because it's giving you a choice. So I could say 10 times 3 equals 30. But really, you can write in whatever numbers you want. Now, for the try this, you have 5 times what times what equals 30. So 5 to get to 30 is 5 times 6, right? But you need to break down 6 into two other facts to get to 30. So how could we break down 6? Well, 6 could be... 2 times 3, so 5 times 2 times 3 equals 30. Does that make sense? 5 times 2 is 10, 10 times 3 equals 30. The next one, similar thing, now we're looking at 54. And can you find 54 on this chart? It's there, it's also there. And I think that's the only place we can see it. And it's going to be... Um, 9 times 6. So you could break it down different ways. And that's not the only way to get 54 to. There are actually other factors, but we'll just use this. Uh, for example, 3 times something is going to give you 54. But let's stick with this. So we need to break one of these down. So we could say 9 could be 3 times 3. So 54 could be 3 times 3 times 6. That would be one choice. Or we could further break down 6, 2 times 3. So 54 could be 9 times 2 times 3. So these are just different ways you can multiply more than one number to get 54. Okay, and then down here, some addition and subtraction for my class. I'm asking you to use partial sums for the addition, and I would like you to use counting up subtraction for the subtraction. So let me do one example of both of those real quick. So I'm going to write my uh, facts with very neat columns, and I'm going to start with the hundreds. So 900 plus 600 is 1,500. 80 plus 50 is 130, and 9 plus 7 is going to give me 16. Now I add these up, and the answer is 1,649. Now, counting up subtraction. I will start with 596, and I'm going to add up until I get to 887. So let me first just add 4 to get to 600. Then I'm going to add, I need to get up to 800 next. 
from 600. So what would I add to get to 800? I would add 200 more. And now I'm at 800. And now I can go all the way to 87. If I add, or 887, if I add 87 more, now I have counted up <clears throat> from 596 to 887. And what did I add? I added these three numbers. So 4 plus 200 plus 87 would be 291. I put together these two, 287, added four more, and that is my answer. It is 291. So for my class, please use those methods. Please write it on the back, and please show your work. That's it for this homelink. Thank you very much.